All right, just a quick scriptural refutation of this Gnostic heresy in Calvinism that makes God into the author of sin. Now, if you think I'm misrepresenting Calvinism, I've done videos showing where pretty much all the historic Calvinist preachers that these, these Calvinists exalt as their gods of philosophy, Jonathan Edwards, uh, even, hey, even John Calvin himself, they all taught, even R.C. Sproul, I showed something from R.C. Sproul, uh, they all taught God is the author of sin. And they use that wording too, by the way, author of sin. I'll link it in the description of the blog post. Calvinism, historic Calvinism, uh, teaches God is the author and cause of sin. So when a Calvinist says that you don't understand Calvinism when you point that out, no, actually, if you're a Calvinist right now and you, you think I, you're going to say you don't understand Calvinism, no, you actually don't understand Calvinism. You don't understand the historic teaching of Calvinism. The historic uh, positions of Calvinism does say that God is the, quote, author of sin, that wording. You know, I've showed it in the past. But you see, Calvinists, just like the Roman Catholics, because reform, reformers, by definition, are just reformed Catholics. You know, whenever you refute their theology, they'll just say, you don't understand, you don't understand. You know, but they don't want to actually address it. I've covered that in other videos, but Calvinism makes God the author of sin. They depart from the scriptural teaching of a sinful, corrupt body of flesh. The point is, we made ourselves sinners. And I'm going to show this in the scriptures, you know, because the Bible uh, refutes Calvinism over and over and over again. And Calvinists will take scriptures out of context. They'll attach unbiblical doctrines into the verses that are teaching corrupt bodies of flesh, that teach we do have a sinful nature, but they attach things like uh, total inability, total depravity, you know, all this other stuff that departs from the scriptural teaching. So here are some scriptures that actually make a really, really big problem for this idea of God being the author of sin. Obviously the best one to go to, one sec. All right, here's the scriptures that refute this Gnostic Calvinist heresy. Sorry, I had a weird little camera malfunction there. Uh, this webcam is not worth what it's what I bought for it. Uh, so it's not worth what I paid for it, I'm going to say. But uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 17 to 18. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? Augustine, John Calvin, Martin Luther, you know, Jonathan Edwards, Charles Spurgeon, you know, James White, uh, John Piper, all the other gods of philosophy. Is Christ, the, oh, R.C. Sproul too, who says God created sin. Hey, is Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. See, you have a sinful, corrupt body of flesh, but it's your own fault. You've made yourself a transgressor. Christ is not the minister of sin, contrary to what the Gnostics believe. Here's more scriptures further refuting this. Uh, James chapter 1, verse 13 to 15. Let no man save when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. There, then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. Okay? Uh, again, you have no one but yourself to blame. God did not, did not, uh, is not the author of sin. Plain and simple. These are direct reputations of this. You know? Hence why I've never seen a Calvinist actually address these verses. Because they can't. That's why. There is no uh, way to, to try to make Calvinism fit into this. Whenever man is tempted, he's drawn away of his own lusts. It's your own fault. More proof of this. Ecclesiastes 7.29. Lo, this only have I found that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. Uh, you are made perfect by God. You, your sin is, you've done this to yourself. You've made yourself worthy of hell. And God shows you grace by providing you salvation through Jesus Christ. These are direct reputations of Calvinism, which is just basically reform. It, it's a modified Gnosticism. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 27 down to verse 29. For I know thy rebellion in thy stiff neck, compared to Acts 7, 31, you know, stiff neck, uncircumcised, you do always resist the Holy Ghost. There goes your, un your, there goes your uh, irresistible grace. For I know thy rebellion in thy stiff neck, there, uh, behold, uh, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye have been rebellious against the Lord, uh, and how much more after my death? Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears, and call heaven and earth to record against them. For I know that after my death ye will utterly corrupt yourselves, and turn aside from, from the way which I have commanded you, and evil will befall you in the latter days, because ye will, you, ye will do the evil in the sight of the Lord, and provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. Plain and simple, it is 100% your doing, your choice. You know, And now Calvinists, they have this thing of the secret will of God, as if that somehow actually explains it away. You know, 
No, all it does is I'm going to do a video refuting this whole secret will thing. But not only is there no scripture to back it up, uh, it actually just makes God a liar. Because he publicly commands one thing, but secretly wants another. So in other words, he's provoked through his anger, or provoked to anger when they do evil by their own hands and they corrupt themselves. But but actually his secret will is that actually that they, 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 they uh, sin. Yeah. You know, that is what you call eisegesis. Just attaching, not, not even attaching in the text, they're just having to come up with this whole false term to explain away the crystal clear scriptures. Basically, having to come up with a term to contradict what the verse says. Uh, Proverbs 8, verse 36, He that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. You see that sin is the polar opposite of what God wants. You wrongeth your own soul. Your, your sin is entirely your own work, the work of your own hands. 1 Corinthians 6, 18, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. Uh, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Again, sin is it's your own it's the work of your own hands and it's something you do to yourself. God does not cause you to do anything in this regard. In fact, God delivers you from temptation. God does not tempt you to sin. You're drawn away of your own lust. How do you fit secret will into this? It's explicitly teaching God does not do it. Psalms 106 verse I'll tell you how you fit secret will and you don't. That's how you fit it in. Is you can't fit it in. Psalms 106 verse 37 to 40. Yea, they sacrifice their sons and their daughters unto devils and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrifice unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. Thus they were defiled with their own works and went a-whoring with their own inventions. You know, God hath made men upright, but they have sought out many inventions. Uh, therefore was the wrath of, of the Lord kindled against his people, insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance. You know, why is God abhorring his own inheritance if he just has a secret will for them to do it? See, Calvinism essentially makes God into a paranoid schizophrenic. You know, they're defiling themselves with their own works, their own inventions, and God is, is abhorring it, but then he actually secretly willed them to do it. In other words, the God of Calvinism is a liar. The God of Calvinism is double-minded. The God of Calvinism is a paranoid schizophrenic. But you see, the God of Calvinism is not the God of the Bible. God hath made men upright, you know, but they have went, they, you know, uh, they sought after their own inventions, you know. You're defiling yourself by your own works. You're sinning against your own body. You're wronging your own soul. You're corrupting yourself. You've made yourself a transgressor. You're drawn away with your lust of, oh, sorry, you're enticed by the lust of your own heart. It is entirely, completely your fault, your own work, your own will, your own choice. God is, is completely separated from your sin, plain and simple. So to make God the author of sin is not only just blasphemous, plain and simple, it's an assault on the nature of God, but it's, it's directly contrary to the scriptures. And in, and in saying that the secret will of God, as if that somehow answers the point, when really it just actually adds to the problems that, of their theology. Because in other words, we can't trust anything God says, if that's the point. If God has a secret will that's contrary to his revealed will, we can't trust anything. How do we even know that Jesus is the only way? If God has a secret will that seems to just contradict his revealed will, then how can we even know? When he says, you know, when, when Jesus Christ, you know, the Son of God says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, how do we know that maybe his secret will is that every religion is the way? I, I, believe me, I'm doing a video, I'm going to slam this whole secret will, of the, uh, secret will of God doctrine. It's just simply a little talking point they come up with to explain away the crystal clear scriptures that refute their Gnostic blasphemy of making God the author of sin, which is, which is uh, from their theistic determinism, you know, which is not the scriptural teaching of determinism. Uh, and, then, and then they'll have the reframe it as you don't believe in the power of God, you know, basically denying that God causes sin is akin to denying the power of God. I could say a whole lot more on that, but Calvinism is just of the devil, plain and simple. It's an attack on the on the God of the Bible. It's an attack on his righteousness. It's an attack on your own personal responsibility for what you do, plain and simple. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.